I only have a couple of days left, and just yesterday, Moira had the worst outburst I've seen her have to date. This is a clear sign that we really have to get serious now. And dog reactivity aside, we still have a ton of other things to do to get Moira into adoptable shape. Get ready, because this is going to be a big episode. This is Moira, and I'm Zach George. Moira, the German Shepherd Dog, is looking for a home, and I've only got two weeks to teach her how to behave so that someone will be willing to adopt her. Okay, we have a situation. And as you can see, it's not going to be easy. She jumps excessively, lunges at almost any distraction. Moira loves to bark, and she definitely pulls on leash and uses her teeth to interact with the world a little too inappropriately. I am feeling a little bit overwhelmed. If that was a dog, she would be like, I'm not paying attention to you, I'm paying attention to that. I will train this dog. Look at this loose leash right now. Shake! Yes! Much better. Yes. Look at me. Is she getting trained? This is reality dog training. We've got a packed schedule for Moira today. I've got to do some training in public with her, which is bound to be an adventure. And I'm going to give this big German Shepherd her first bath today. I also want to evaluate how she's doing on her resource guarding, or hopefully lack thereof, right now. Moira loves her solid gold breakfast, so this is a great time to practice. And so far, Moira hasn't shown any signs of resource guarding. I just want to keep that up and make sure she's comfortable with human hands being present near her food when she eats. I want her to know, look, I'm going to give you food back just like that right there. Since I don't really have much reason to think that she's a resource guarder, I don't have a problem doing this exercise. But if I was working with a dog that had a history of this, we would approach this very differently. Did you see how when I took the food away, she's like, no, 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 give it back. She wasn't resource guarding, but I don't want that to start. So I want her to get very used to humans interacting with her food so she doesn't feel threatened. Solid gold is like super high-end premium dog food. I love all the omega fatty acids in here because they're great for her skin and coat and her immune system too. Solid Gold doesn't just make food, they also have these really top-notch supplements as well. These are packed with nutrition right here. I think it's a really good idea to go out of your way to feed your dog a really high-quality diet. Keep in mind that all dog food is not equal, and some of those grocery store brands aren't really going to have those high-quality top-notch ingredients and supplements in them like Solid Gold does. I'm going to have a link in the description, solidgoldpet.com slash Zach, and they're going to give you 30% off of select Solid Gold products so you can see how great they are. Everything looks great here. She's definitely enjoying her meal, but it doesn't look like there's much to worry about in terms of being too protective of her food. So let's move on and do some more pressing training issues with Moira. As we all know, one of the biggest issues I've been dealing with with Moira is that she continues to be extremely excited by other dogs. And her resultant barking is out of control. I'm hoping we can channel her desire to interact with another dog into play with a person. This is an unplanned training session, as you can see. This is a great example of a secondary training session. That's where I'm not exactly expecting to train at that moment, but I have to because her attention is on those dogs outside. I'm continuing to control her environment in the house by having her on this long tie out sometimes. Now, just because Moira stopped barking that time doesn't mean all of a sudden it's fixed forever. <laughs> So my advice to people dealing with this, if your dog is doing this, then you have to stop what you're doing, address your dog, get their attention on you, and reward for good behavior. At first, you're gonna have to do this an awful lot, and it may even feel like, oh my gosh, am I ever gonna get results? But if you're consistent, your dog will learn. I'm really encouraged by the fact that Moira is paying attention a little bit better. She's running to me, you know, after a second or two of barking. That one was a little tough but I'm continuing to work with her on this. This is a top priority of mine. Moira is still pretty reactive to dogs, so let's try to make some progress on this outside. So you guys might remember, last training session, we definitely had some serious issues with her in terms of lunging and pulling and barking at other dogs and people when they would walk by, especially dogs. So I've got us back out here at the park today where I'm hoping to do some extended screensaver training with her. That is letting the world just happen to her as we hang out here. Maybe I can get her playing fetch or something. That would be ideal. If I can get some of this energy out of her, she's gonna be easier to communicate with. My goal today is to really desensitize Moira to the world around her and especially other dogs. And you might notice that I'm at a much farther distance than we were yesterday. She's wound up straight away. She's biting at her leash. That's just a dog that wants to play. So let me put her on the long lead so you can see straight away. We've got some dogs here. <coughs> That's enough. <coughs> 
Uh-uh, that's enough. Here we go again. I mean, yesterday she had an extreme outburst at the dog park when she was barking at other dogs. And here I'm thinking, all right, I'm doing the right thing. I've got her much farther away from other dogs. And immediately, we start off our day like this. So I find sometimes by picking them up, it tends to calm them down. But here we had a compounding factor in that both dogs were uh, barking at one another. By picking Moira up, I am not reinforcing this barking reactive behavior. She doesn't seem to find pleasure in being picked up. I'm simply trying to lower the temperature of her reactivity here. I'm not exactly training her, but I am managing her. And as you can see, her outburst subsides immediately after I do that. Now, if this were impractical for someone, another option would be to simply go farther away from the thing that's causing her to behave this way. For me as a dog trainer, this is discouraging because I really thought I'd set her up for success, but I've had a very limited amount of success with her around other dogs. So I know that she has it in her to do it. I'm just trying to build on those very early, albeit very few successes. Now I know in the comments of this video, there's gonna be some out there who are saying that I need to correct her with a choke chain, a prong collar, or even an electric collar. But the last thing I wanna do here is create additional stress by providing firm corrections in the presence of other dogs. It's my hypothesis that she simply needs to be desensitized to other dogs, to be around them and to see what they're all about so that she can learn how to behave better contextually. Not the ideal start to our training session. I thought we had enough distance there. I'm going to see if getting her a little more fatigued here might help by the time the next dog walks by. And so I'm seeing that there's pretty steady traffic here. This is exactly what I'm looking for. Right now, silver lining is the fact that she is playing a pretty focused game of fetch in a pretty distracting environment. I mean, I know from experience with training a lot of dogs on this patch of grass here, there are a lot of smells on the ground from when the tide comes in. And she's doing such a good job of tuning all that out and playing fetch, which means that I'm able to get her energy out, which is a huge victory with a dog like this. If you get their energy out, they're far more willing to pay attention to you. It looks like she's looking at a jogger. Moira. Yes, come on. Good girl. Beautiful. You could see her ear actually listen behind. Moira, here, come. Yes, good. Can I have a sit too? I'll take it. Good job. So there, some bikes were riding by. We have some more pedestrians coming by. She's doing really well with general traffic. I mean, just a few days ago, she would get excited at the sight of any human being. So practicing getting her attention on me in the presence of distractions here in between our fetch rounds is proving to be successful so far. Pretty legit screensaver dog training today. Kind of looks like a real screensaver. Look at her eyes, her ears, her body language. She's just checking it out. She's reacting appropriately, which is calmly. It's what we people prefer. And so be sure you really walk the line of letting your dog see the world versus asking for their attention. You do want to be able to get their attention around distractions, but the newer they are to training, the more tolerant you need to be of them being distracted. Got some people walking by right here behind me. She's playing with me enthusiastically. Come on, girl. Nice. Good. Here comes a jogger again. Here, right there. She's a little distracted. Here, look at me. Yes. Come. Sit. Beautiful. Complete attention on me. I mean, it's these small moments that we want to build on right here. She's so focused on those bicycles right now. I'm going to let her look at those just to satisfy her curiosity. Now, let me see if I can call her. Here. Come. Good girl. So we're getting a nice combination here. She definitely sees that dog, but she's behaving very well. Looks like they want to stop and look at us, which is fine by me. Helps me train. Again, happy to let her look at the dog, but let me see if I can get her attention on me. Moira, come on, let's go. This way, good. Sit, stay. Still a pretty considerable distance, but we'll take it. Okay, so we're one for one, one outburst. She did okay with this dog who was farther away. Granted that dog wasn't barking at her, but that doesn't usually stop her. So to me, this is a good thing. We've got a couple more dogs over here that are approaching us. It's another opportunity. Counter conditioning. You see how we're trying to change her emotional response here to dogs? We've exercised her a little bit, though she could probably use a little more. Stay. We're providing really good treats as an outcome to her good behavior here. Yes. Here. Moira. Yes. Got a couple of people coming over here. We have a loose leash. She's not barking and lunging. Moira, I'm so proud of you, girl. 
know, you're doing a good job. This is the kind of thing you would want to do for a couple hours where you can, you know, on a weekend, on a pretty day like this. And I've chosen this location specifically because I feel like it's got some challenges, but it's not the toughest environment. You might notice we're not in a downtown area right now training her. We're trying to prepare her for more distracting environments in the future, but we have to start small with dogs like this. So if you find that your dog is just constantly barking and lunging, that means you're probably consistently putting them in an environment where they're not yet ready to take direction from you. So find an easier environment and practice there a little bit more. I'm gonna get back to fetch though. She's a little distracted right now. Moira still gets very excited when she sees people as well. So that's another huge part of my training goal today to get her to pay attention to me and the presence of things that she finds exciting, whether it be dogs or people. Really delicate moment here. So there she was distracted, but I got her to stay focused on the toy. She was acknowledging the person and was like, all right, I'll stay focused on the toy instead. And that will definitely transition into better focus in the future. And I think that I need to consistently get that energy out of her in order to achieve greater success today. At one point there, as he was getting farther away, I was actually able to throw the toy in his direction and she still picked up the toy and came back. She's been pretty good around bikes. We've got some approaching. Moira. Yeah, ready. There's a good example of using the long lead to control them and reel them in. There's a fine line between using too much force and teaching your dog to come to you while reeling them in. I mean, you want to use the least aversive method that's likely to work, but I don't want her getting in the habit of disregarding come when called. That's why I'll occasionally give them that reminder, hey, keep coming, because come when called is such a life-saving skill. That's more of a management solution than it is a teaching one. It means I still have work to do. While we've got some downtime and she's panting and seems happy and satisfied, I think it's time to introduce a new trick to her. I think we talked about training her how to give a hug. Nothing fancy to teaching a hug. You just put a treat at their nose and guide them where you want them to go. Just another form of lure training. Don't want to push her to failure and okay. Okay, good girl. So I want her to know there's a clear beginning and end to hug. That was pretty good. Come on. Whoa, boy, I can't even support you. Stay, stay, stay. Okay, good girl, good work, yeah, nice. Here, one more, come on, come on. Oh my gosh, German Shepherd hug. If you have a friend or a family member who can help you with this, that would probably make it easier, but my wife likes to watch me struggle and just film it instead. Thanks, Bree. All right, so hug, nice introductory session there. I wanna check in on Bao. Let me see if she can do that one yet. We've been struggling with Bao a little bit. She's been getting a little bit better. Yes! Yeah, that looked pretty good. Good girl, ready? Yes, here, good. See how she's not putting her butt down anymore? Yes, 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 yes. And okay, come on, come on, come on. Yes, good girl. Was that beautiful or what? And before some of you out there go saying, hey Zach, I don't care about tricks. Remember when you teach your dog silly fun tricks like that, not only are they entertaining, but your dog has learned how to communicate with you as a person even better. And by the way, the drone, very close to her. We don't normally fly a drone that close to a dog because it throws them off. Not Moira though. She's done really well with that. Can I point out her body language right now? Do you see how she's panting? Do you see how she's lying down, hips relaxed, paying attention to her environment, but not trying to run away? And that's because we gave her exercise and we're trying to be worth paying attention to, which is easier said than done with a young German Shepherd dog. <laughs> I still want to continue her heel training as well. So let's see how she's doing with that. Remember heels where she just stays to one side of me. This can be a practical skill for many dogs to learn. Here, come on, let's go. Yes. Here. Moira. Yes. The key here is to get them to pay attention to you while you're walking. That's why this isn't realistic to train them to do all of the time when you're on a walk, but during short bursts, it can be realistic. Because sometimes you need your dog's complete attention while you're moving. That's one of the virtues of teaching heel. And she's picked it up super quick. As clunky as this long lead is, it does allow me to simulate off-leash conditions to some degree with her, which is nice. It's not very fun training your dog with a tense leash, is it? Obviously, we have to work on her body positioning here, but I'm not too focused on that right now. I think for a real-world heel, for most pet parents, this would be fine with them at this point, and I'm fine with it too. We're not going to celebrate progress and not insist on perfection, especially since we only have a few days left with her. Look at me. 
Yes. Good. Let me see if I can get a turn. Moira, here. This way. Oh, a little awkward. Let me give her a lure. It's okay. Come on. You're doing great. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Are you serious? So Moira is doing incredible here, but we're about to have a huge test. Good. I see dogs in the distance over there. Let me see if I can keep her focused on me. Come on. This way. Good girl. Who's being a good girl? Come on. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Okay, starting to lose her here. You can see she's getting a bit distracted. Let me create some distance. Moira, come. Good girl. Yes. Good girl. And this is great. Notice the dogs are walking by. She's not lunging and pulling, where she might have just very recently. Seeing Moira do this is blowing me away. I mean, this is exactly what we've been working towards. If you were trying to teach a dog like Moira to behave, especially around other dogs, you would not want to take these successes for granted. Overreactivity issues like this can be extremely overwhelming at times. This is a good example of how being patient and really taking the time to show your dog how you'd prefer they behave during times like this can be so much more profound than punishing them for doing things that come very naturally to dogs. And it doesn't take long at all for a dog like Moira to recharge. So she's got that energy ready to go again. So I'm gonna now deplete some of that energy. And this is kind of how our training's been going. A little bit of fetch, a little bit of obedience, but you have to really meet her halfway and give her that outlet. I just can't emphasize that enough for these high energy dogs. I love working with dogs right after we play fetch. It's my favorite time to work with them. This might be a good time to work on stay with distance as well. We haven't done a very long stay with distance, so she might be ready for it. Stay. Nice distraction there. Yes. Get her warmed up. Look at me. Stay. Yes. Stay. Yes. Okay, yes. Good. That was good for a warm up, but I think she can do better. Stay. I'm gonna go even farther away. The farther I go, the more challenging it is for her. But if she'll listen to me from farther away, that is a great illustration that our communication and her self-control is getting a lot stronger. Okay, come. Yeah, I love that. Look at that sprint. Good girl. Okay, good job. Now, as a reward, let her go on a sniff break for 30 seconds. It's not really uncommon to find dead fish out here or any other trash that washes up from the lake. So there's a multitude of distractions out here. But the long lead, honestly, when you feel like your dog is ready for it, uh-ah, -uh. okay. Oh no, what, she's got something in her mouth. <laughs> good girl. Okay, that's an old fish. Okay, that wasn't a very dog trainer thing to do, but I didn't want that dead fish anywhere near me. She's really into that dead fish over there. All right. We were just making progress on reactivity to dogs. Don't tell me we're trading it in for reactivity to dead fish now. Moira, come. Let's go this way. Good girl, yes. Come on, what I got's better than that fish. I mean, maybe not to you, but look how easy that was. She was barking because she wanted to get at that fish some more and explore it. And I was able to call her away from it. Now that we're farther away, she's more likely to listen or not. Moira, come. Yes, good girl. And really, this is just a sign that Moira seems to be in a very playful mood. So you know what that means. Let's do another round of fetch with her. Interspersing fetch with training like this has been very effective with Moira and lots of other dogs that I've worked with. She gets the satisfaction of running and chasing and playing. And I get the benefit of giving her experience listening to me while in that playful, excited state of mind. So we have a dog coming up over here and it seems to be, I don't know if it's bigger dogs or not that she reacts to, but good. Oh, she just spotted the dog. Sit. Beautiful. Moira appears to be feeling a little conflicted. I mean, on one hand, I'm sure she'd like to react to the dog, but she's also got me trying to convince her to be good and pay attention. And those conflicting emotions can sometimes be a little stressful to dogs, which is why we see them doing body language like shaking off in these contexts. And that's okay. It's my job to clear up that communication with her. But can I call her away from other dogs? That is the main goal I have in the limited time I have to train Moira. Moira, come. Yes. 
We've had a couple of examples now where I'm not just having to escort her away from a dog. I'm able to put her into a sit, a stay, even walk away a little bit, ask her to come to me. In other words, we're able to start putting some of these realistic skills we've taught her into practice in practical situations. And that really is the key. She's looking alert by this dog now. Moira, come. Here, come on. Good, sit. Can I have a sip, please? Thank you. Yes. You can see there was still a tiny bit of tension as I reached the end of the leash there, but we're working towards having her come with zero tension on that leash. Remember, Moira is no dummy. Holding her stay when I'm too far away to quickly reach her is a more advanced concept, and she's doing amazing here. Moira, come. Yes, much better. Very good. Wow. And so I'm just trying to practice stay and come as much as I can with strange new dogs in the vicinity. That's what we're doing here. Moira. Come. Yes, look at that. All focus on me right now, none on the dog. Progress like we just saw with Moira is huge. I mean, just getting started with an overreactive dog is the hardest part. Once you start seeing results like this, success can start coming much more quickly from there. But always go at the pace of your own individual dog. You cannot rush through training like this. Now that Moira's had some awesome successes, we've done some training, she's got her energy out, let me show you how things are going inside the house. One of the things that I'm starting to do with her to get her comfortable with off-leash time in the house is after a training session like that, I'll remove the lead while she's chilling out in a stable state. That's a good-looking settle. You're learning how to relax. I mean, it's night and day with high-energy dogs when you spend 20 minutes to an hour really focused training with them every day. Those are the eyes of satisfied German Shepherd dog. Moira's house manners have continued to impress. She's doing really well, but I've got to tell you, I'm a bit reluctant to give her her first bath, with me anyway. I'm very apprehensive about this uh, training lesson that we're about to have. I've never given Moira a bath, and she's definitely due for one. And plus, everyone likes a clean dog, right? But with older dogs, there's a very good chance that she's had baths before. In fact, I know she has. Most people have a timer going in their mind where they want to get it done within 10, 20, 30 minutes, whatever. And oftentimes, rushing a bath, especially those first few times, can really condition dogs not to like getting one. So I'm. Curious to see how she does in the bath today. Don't know how far we're gonna get. My goal is just to get her comfortable with some of the handling practices in the bath. Not necessarily trying to make her the cleanest she's ever been, but I don't know, maybe we'll get lucky here. Let's see how she does. It's a little awkward for her to jump in, so I'm gonna place her in, but I'm gonna have some food right here for her just to make the process enjoyable, hopefully. Here. You want this? You wanna check it out for a second? Go ahead. Gonna give her tiny pieces of chicken here. I just wanna take a moment to get her comfortable here first. Good girl. <laughs> I love it when that happens. I turned on the water just ever so quickly there to see how she would react. If she was scared of it, I didn't want her to continue to get scared, but since she was willing to just start licking the water, I'm fine with that. This is where I'm gonna start. I'm just gonna let the water run for a little bit. I know you're seeing me treat her a lot today and throughout this series, and I am, but I am keeping the treats extremely small, size of a grain of rice to a pea in most cases. Sometimes we use her kibble when she's responsive to that. This is great. Love that she's drinking the water there. Doesn't seem scared of the water, that's nice. Let me see if I can turn it on a little more there. Yes. Just gonna put a little water in here. Let her see it. Okay, it's not what I had in mind, but yes. Oh, look at that. You want this or not? Oh, great. Beautiful. Good girl. Right now, she may not be loving it, but she's behaving pretty good. So I'm gonna try to see if we can sneak a bath in here. I'm not gonna pour it on her head just yet, or at all probably for this bath, because most dogs don't like that. Yeah, nice job. Good girl, let's rub it in there. Look how skinny you are, you're such a skinny girl. See, I'm gonna put some on her head like this. I don't just wanna pour it on her head, because their ears and head can be sensitive. Or no, we're not, oh boy. Oh boy, come on now. So I'm really trying to walk the line. While she's trying to get out, I don't feel like she's totally shut down and freaking out. I mean, she's taking treats and she's doing okay. She's not loving it, but I think we can proceed. As you can see, we get our dog shampoo in bulk here. This is not bleach. 
Looks like Moira is exploring various alternative routes to see if she can get out of the tub. Can you imagine how much worse this would have gone had we not just exercised her? We're just gonna put a little bit of shampoo on her. Maybe a little more. Oh my gosh, look at her. Look at her getting all soapy. I'm gonna rub that tummy. She's doing great for the shampoo part. Get her tail. Oh boy. So she tries to make a run for it here and there, but you know, we just wanna desensitize her to this process over time. And I suspect she's the kind of dog who would get a little bit better with every bath. Easy girl, it's okay. So we've got this lick mat here, which can seal onto the side of the tub. Let's see if that makes her feel a little bit more comfortable here. Oh, look at this, much better. Whoa, all right. Gotta be prepared to get a little wet here. You can see that's helping quite a bit here. I'm not saying it's a perfect fix for a lot of dogs, but it must make bath time a little more enjoyable for her. Good girl. Whoa, stay there, girl. It held her attention for a little bit, but either way, she's doing pretty well right now. She's tolerant. All right. That was pretty good. She was even able to be tolerant there while we rinsed her on the head and her chest. Look at all that hair coming off. Look at all that hair. That's why they call you German Shedders. So, you know, not the smoothest bath, but not the worst bath ever. I think she did pretty well. Okay, go on. <laughs> there we go. Shake off. Good job, Moira. That's a real world bath for many rescue dogs. Like I said before, she's probably had baths that have gone much like that. So it's gonna take some time to reverse her perception that a bath can be a really fun place. We tried the lick mat there for her to lick the peanut butter and that worked for a second, but she wasn't feeling it. So I just tried to be really gentle and I decided not to be as thorough as I might otherwise be during a regular bath, just in the interest of ending on a relatively good note. Today marks one week straight that I've been able to have Moira spend the night in her doggy bedroom, and she's been perfect. We've had no issues really with unwanted barking or having her jump at the door trying to get out. I mean, she really has just taken to that area very well. And this is a big move because you might remember the first five nights that I had her, I had to move downstairs into the living room, sleep next to her in order to keep her calm and reduce that anxiety. So it really worked out not insisting that she sleep in the crate, but giving her a slightly larger area, but still controlled and dog safe. And one of the reasons I think this has been a lot more successful is because I'm obviously spending a lot of time with her, not only training her, but exercising her. So she's far more likely to just crash at night and go to sleep and be happy. And by the way, she's definitely definitely made the honor roll for her potty training too. So today is kind of an off day from filming. We have some admin to do, but that doesn't mean that training is going to stop with Moira. I've got to still maintain her training, a lot of the things that we've covered so far in practice. And so I'm going to take you along for what my off camera practice sessions are like. Good girl. Yes. Oh, look what just happened here. got these folks walking with the dog. I was just looking out here. She didn't bark once. There she is looking at the dog again. Moira, come on. Here, come on, let's go. You wanna stay out here, I can tell. I'm gonna let you stay out here, but that's good. Basically, getting her attention off of the dog. She reacted so appropriately there. Go. <laughs> She's really taken an interest in the tennis ball lately. Good girl, yes. Very good. By polishing up her game of fetch like this, it's gonna mean everything. It's like the foundation of training for energetic dogs. Can you let go? Yes, go. Really nice work there. I mean, she's not perfect. See how she's wandering around. She's enjoying chomping on it. I'm okay with that for right now. Hey, okay, good. It's really easy to re-spark her interest. Like with my own dog, Inertia, it's not that easy. Come here. Yes. Not playing keep away, I love this. I'm using a robotic tripod if you're wondering. We have some pedestrians over here. She likes to check out the people walking up there. Moira, come. Come on. Yes. Good, ready and go. Come on. Let's go. 
I'm really walking this line with Moira right now, letting her kind of run around and chomp on it versus insisting that she bring it straight back to me. It's like a little give and take. Notice too how short our reps are here. I don't need a football field to play fetch. In fact, in the beginning, it's better to have shorter reps. She's actually in a really stable mindset right now. I wanna work on lie down. We've been struggling a little bit with that. She's kind of taken a step back on that lately. Yes, that looks pretty good. Lie down. Okay, yes, she really wants to pop up from the lie down and I want her to hold her stay until I release her from it. Good girl. Here, stay. No. So working on her down stay is interesting. Okay, good. Before she initiates breaking that stay, I'm releasing her from it. Okay. Yes. Okay, good. I'm gonna give her a half a lure. I still want her seeing that hand signal. Okay, good girl. Let me see if I can get a longer one. Sit, easy, sit, good. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, good. I think she's starting to get it. Let me see if I can get it with distance. Yes. Yes. Stay here. Stay. Okay, yes, good. I did fall back there on giving her the stay request, just to be ultra clear. But ultimately, I want her to understand, like sit means sit there until I release you, and down means stay there until I release you. But I still think it's really valuable to zoom in and teach stay in specific contexts. I know this from my performing days. I mean, sometimes you want your dog to hold a really delicate position for a short period of time, for example, or as you're guiding them and teaching them something new, being able to say stay right there is often a valuable thing to do. I want to get acknowledgement on this one. It's going to be hard. Stay. Here. Okay, come. Sit. Yes, good girl. I'm going to give you an extra big treat there. That was really nice. Good job, girl. Okay, you want to play? I'm going to give her a mental break for a few minutes, and then I really want to work on training heel a little bit more to her. I'm going to get her into the heel position by luring her back here. Come on. And I'll Come on, this way. Just kind of cheat her into it there. Yes. Come on. Yes. We're trying to avoid the automatic sit, ideally. Here. Yes. 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 You can see, like, literally one yes. step at a time you're rewarding to really communicate to them what you want. Yes. Here. Okay, good. Just letting her know the exercise is over there. And again, I want to address the treat size using really small pieces there. Sit. Yes, good girl. Let's just, rather than try to put her in position, let's just line up to her for right now. Get her used to this position. Yes. 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 Yes, I'm very careful to try to treat at my pants seam, make her look there for the reward. Okay, I, I'll gladly reward you with a ball. Okay. Yes, I got like two steps of heel out of her for the ball. That's cool. And this is absolutely a valid way to reward your dog for heel training. Here, look at me. Come on, come on. Yes, good, go. A little bit more focus for the ball, huh? That's nice. I like that. Come on, let's go. Yes, good. I'm only trying to get two, three steps in at a time. You see how throwing it against the building sparked her interest there? Here. I want her a little closer than that. Here, come on. Come on, let's go. Yes, love that little trot. That was good. I'm trying to just wait for that light bulb to go off for one of us. <laughs> good. Here, come on. Come on, 
Come on, come on. Yes, good, okay. Really good success right there. It's that fine line between getting her way up there and super energized, but also like keeping her really optimistic about the training session. In her mind, she's just playing right now. She's like, oh, okay. I trot with you on one side of you and I stay close and we get to play one of my favorite games on earth, fetch. So I'd say pretty successful heel lesson right there. Good job, girl. I'm so proud of how far Moira has come on heel. I mean, things are really starting to come together here at the last minute. Let's see what I have up my sleeve next for her. Honestly, I don't think I can remember at this point. I wanna work on bow with her. She's getting so close to being even more amazing. We've done a few lessons on bow so far and Moira is really starting to get it. But yes. the toughest part of teaching bow to most dogs yes. is getting them to yes. keep that butt up in the yes. air. And you can see I'm yes. very focused on that yes. here. Okay, perfect, perfect. See, like really sealing those treats in as she's holding the position. Now let's see if we can use fewer treats. Yes, good. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, she started to get distracted by someone out there, but still stayed with the training session. So pretty good. The weather's been gorgeous. So we've had lots of extra traffic at the park behind the house here. Bow. Yes. 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 Okay, good. I mean, you could see how I was just experimenting with the throttle there, seeing how slow I could get away with rewarding her. So a second ago, it was rapid fire with those tiny treats, and then it was a little bit slower, and there significantly slower. So that's how Bao is looking. Thumbs up for Moira. She's so awesome, and I have a feeling things are gonna go even better tomorrow. And I also have a feeling that you can get 30% off of Solid Gold products by going to my special link, solidgoldpet.com slash Zach. Subscribe to my channel. Channel, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, and get both of my books. We'll see you in episode 10.